Hello and welcome to this video on calculating pure phase equilibria from equations of state part 2. By the end of this video you'll be able to describe and implement the calculation of the vapour pressure using an equation of state. Now where this comes from is from our previous discussions on the criteria for phase equilibria that between the two phases we have to get a equality of the Gibbs free energy okay so that's our first condition uh, and then in place of this we define something called the fugacity which is a slightly nicer way of writing it because fugacity um, approaches pressure at low pressure uh, or in ideal gas behavior so it's a slightly nicer quantity to deal with now to use this in conjunction with an equation of state then what we have to do is an iterative process so this is similar to when we've looked at compressors or something like that and we've wanted to calculate well del where delta s is equal to zero same sort of thing here but we're wanting to calculate where the fugacity of the liquid and the gas phase is the same and so to do this what i have here is a good example of um, uh, an algorithm or a set of steps used to do the calculation. So to start with I've got to choose my equation of state and get my parameters uh, for my equation of state, so my critical parameters and then if I'm calculating vapor pressure for a particular temperature then uh, I would need to enter my temperature into my equation, solve for any anything that's a function of temperature so this would be something like um, the alpha term in the Peng Robinson equation of state then my next step is to guess a pressure and then calculate any parameters that are a function of pressure once I've done that then I can solve for my gas phase volume and also my liquid phase volume as well once I have those two things then I have enough information to be able to calculate my gas phase fugacity and my liquid phase fugacity as well and then I check to see okay are these two things similar enough to each other so my tolerance might be uh, are my liquid and gas phase fugacities within 1% of each other if no then I go up here and I improve my estimate of P if it is within tolerance then yes I've found my saturation pressure or my vapor pressure in this case. So to demonstrate this I'm going to look at an, at an example of uh, butane. Uh, butane at uh, 50 degrees uh, Celsius and um, and also using the van der Waals equation of state so because we've already done the uh, fugacity calculations with that so butane at 50 degrees Celsius which is 323.15 Kelvin so so I go through I've chosen my equation of state that's good um, there's no temperature dependent parameters in the uh, van der Waals equation of state now I'm going to guess my pressure Okay, so, so my initial guess for pressure is going to be uh, half a megapascal, so 500,000 um, pascals. And so here this is my using my equation of state for, for butane, so the temperature I'm interested in, 323 Kelvin. Here are my critical parameters, so my critical temperature, my critical pressure. With these then I calculate my uh, two constants A and B and then for the temperature that I've got and for my pressure guess okay, then I am able to solve for the volume of the gas and the volume of the liquid. Okay, so these are just solved using uh, Solver in Excel. You can also use F-Solve in MATLAB uh, and, and that sort of thing. Now that I've got all these things, I can calculate uh, my compressibility Z. Okay, so of course I would expect that the compressibility 
uh, or Z of my liquid phase is smaller than my gas phase and that's what I've got here and then I'm just calculating the bits of the equation that I use to calculate the uh, fugacity coefficient so FC is just the fugacity coefficient here and then once I've got my fugacity coefficient I can calculate my fugacity and what we see here is that for the gas phase my fugacity is close to uh, 5 megapascals or 0.5 megapascals I mean but my liquid phase fugacity is really different so I need to guess another pressure and so I'm going to guess a higher pressure now so my new pressure guess is uh, 1.5 megapascals okay so I'm going through the same process again I find my volumes and then once I've got my volumes I'm able to calculate each of these things in turn and what I see is is that now is that my um, two pressures or my two fugacities rather are much closer to each other so my error now is only 16% so I'm just going to revise my guess so it's in between these two and so I'm going to guess a slightly lower pressure so now I guess 1.15 megapascals solve for my volumes again and then go through and calculate each of the parts okay including Z which I forgot last time and now my fugacities are very very close to each other so both about 0.95 megapascals and you can see that the difference is very small so this here is a correct guess and I'm happy with this so, so that's my fugacity and so if I look at this on a chart then what this is a plot of is the vapor pressure so the vapor pressure for different equations of state a thousand divided by temperature and so line A here uh, sorry uh, line A here is for the van der Waals equation of state line B is for the simplified Peng Robinson and then line C down here is for the Peng Robinson okay so so the answer that I just got sits on this point here and so it's roughly 10 bar so I got uh, slightly higher than 10 bar so but that uh, certainly fits in with that log plot okay so so if we go back just to reiterate the main point that to calculate the vapor pressure it's it's an iterative process so you need to use the uh, calculations for calculating fugacity coefficient and then fugacity and then once you've got that you can calculate uh, to see whether the gas phase and the liquid phase have the same fugacity. So to recap, finding the pressure where the fugacity of the vapor and the liquid phase are equal is an iterative process. Thanks for your time.